Hey everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Q&A 5, part 5. So let's just get right into it. Uh, if you've heard everything so far, you understand why I'm doing it, so we'll just avoid that for now. The um, I got a text here, listening to your show pretty often, constructive advice, don't bust on people who want to text their participation, rather open all avenues. If you want to read something on the air from me, just announce a 37-year-old person who finds it easier to text. Wants to say thanks for making me erase and re-erase my whiteboard over and over as I illustrate these theories for people who really, who don't really care where they are. Thanks, man. End quote. One love. I'm in Ballard. Thanks for listening. Don't read my number, though, dude. Should have prefaced with that. Never catch you live. Thank you very much for texting. So that was my fun text of the day. Let's get back into the emails. Uh, let's see. Daniel writes a question about Flat Earth Theory. Hello, I am Daniel from Romania, all caps. I saw your video translated in my language and at the beginning seems to me very bizarre, but after seeing it, it's very intriguing and interesting. A question rode in my mind if the Earth has a shield around why someone when they look at the sky with a telescope do not see this wall the shield is transparent like glass if the wall really exists why is the reason we cannot see it i think and, the, and i'm i'm trying to make it through the spelling here the spelling is unbelievable i think if the wall really exists we should see it with the telescope even if it is transparent what is your opinion? Apologize for my bad English. <laughs> E-A-N-G-L-I-S-H-H. -H. I hope you will understand the reply. Thank you. And he spelled thank. T-H-A-N-C-K. Well, it's not totally wrong. Uh, no, no, that's the whole point. Uh, the, the barrier can't be seen with a telescope. If it could be seen with a telescope, you know, we've had telescopes for a long time now. A uh, hundred years at least maybe longer when it comes to you know some of the really antique ones so no if you could spot it people would be wondering that for a long long time and and the firmament idea would have not gone away as fast as it did so no if it's transparent it's really transparent and it's probably made out of material that's far beyond us so no i do not think you can see it hopefully that helps chris writes your youtube presentation hi interesting watching i was brought up to believe that the seasons of this place were caused by an oval orbit of the sun hence the summer months being hot while being closest to the sun the contradiction comes when i am told while i enjoy my summer new zealand is having a bitter winter uh is that because they are far from the sun I know something is wrong with this place, but cannot see behind the curtain, and for what reason? We have so much speculation and billions of theories, but yet we, I don't know about billions, uh, but yet we are no more than ants. I thought this might be of interest. Zephron, uh, that's his, apparently the, his handle he's going by. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, sun, the sun does heat up quite a bit of the world but I, I think most of the heat comes from below I think it comes from below the Sun at least you know the uh, the jet stream the underwater conveyor system the magma system I think they all work in combination with the Sun no different than uh, all the different heating elements that you can get while you're in a car yeah the Sun comes through in the car window but you also have heated seats you also have the air condition con conditioning system uh, yeah the, the engine generates a whole all different types of heat that you have access to, and I think that's the same thing here. Len writes, <clears throat> obsessing about the flat earth. Dear Mark, flat earth is fun. It doesn't have to be serious. I just tell my friends about CGI, no curvature, etc., and dare them to check the evidence. It's all done with a framework of frivolity. We should start labeling the scientific community as cowards. In fact, call them the Scientific Cowardice Party. The same applies, unfortunately, to TED Talks. Make fun of them all. I admire the de dedication that you are giving to Flat Earth, and I hope you are having fun with it. Please don't get sucked into religious fraternity efforts. 
to promote non-evidentiary arguments into the flat earth factual realm. I suspect to compete with NASA versions of a mythical globe, CGI images will start appearing of a likewise mythical heaven complete with a mythical entity sitting on a mythical throne doing a Rofen's thinker pose. By the way, there is no value at all getting sucked into so-called open-minded interviewers' questions of domes, water firmament, and way out speculations. It leads to ridicule. Very, my very best to you, Len Morning. <coughs> Morning. Well, Len, I gotta disagree in, in, in some ways because if it wasn't for the leaps of faith, if it wasn't for the speculation and the imagination and trying to connect the dots, and that's where I, the leap of faith comes in. You're, you're leaping from one dot to another. You have to do that. Science doesn't do that. Religion does it all the time. Uh, mostly without scientific backing, but I believe there 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 can be a, a middle ground here, and that's you know. So I don't mind getting into questions about domes, water firmament, and way out speculations. For, you know, I open with flat Earth. That's how I start my day. So nothing is out of bounds here. In fact, you know, I'm, I'm actually a little surprised you didn't bring up the trees. How, how that uh, the ancient trees were, were cut down and the stumps are still there lying around as mesas. Yeah, that's about as far out of idea as I've ever heard this year. But at the same time, I'm not against it. Because why not? Why not? If Flat Earth is now in play, then everything comes back on the table. With the exception of Elvis being still alive. I, I still don't believe in that. And of course, Richard Hoagland's theories about people living on the moon and Mars and Venus and all that. I don't, I don't buy that for a second anymore. Because there's no solar system, there's no universe, it's just us. So anyway, thank you though for the, the suggestion there, Len. Uh, let's see, Kathy writes... Navy resumes teaching celestial navigation just in case GPS is neutralized. Look at this, coming from Space Policy News. And this was sent to a few uh, people in the community, but I don't know if anyone else has addressed it. Uh, with growing concern about the vulnerability of United States national security space systems, resiliency is the watchword, and the military services are looking for alternatives in case space systems are unavailable. The Navy, for example, has resumed teaching celestial navigation in case the global positioning system is rendered unusable. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral John Richardson told Senator Joni Ernst out of Iowa at a hearing on Thursday that celestial navigation is back in the curriculum at the Naval Academy and other places in order to minimize the Navy's vulnerability to electronic systems like GPS. We got to stay in the channel, ma'am. He added uh, that the Navy also is working with its industrial partners on other ways to get precision navigation and timing into our systems that uh, are independent of GPS and potentially more precise, not only for navigation, but weapons systems performance. Richardson and the other three military chiefs testified to the Senate Armed Services Committee about long-term military budget challenges. Joining him were Air Force Chief of Staff General David Goldfein, Army Chief of Staff General Mark Milley, and Com Com Commandant of the Marine Corps General Robert Neller. Goldfein noted in his opening statement that to maintain its technological edge, the Air Force is laser focused on five areas, one of which is preparing for a war that could extend into space. The others are fighter, tanker, and bomber recapitalization, nuclear moder modernization, increasing our capability and capacity in the cyber domain, and the leveraging and improving multi-domain and coalition friendly command and control. Apart from that, Little of the hearing touched on the needs of national security space specifically. Senators Jack Reed, out of Rhode Island, the top Democrat on the committee, and Senator Jim Inhofe, out of Oklahoma, both mentioned threats to space systems among their concerns, their opening statements, but the bulk of the hearing was on the impact on the military if sequestration returns. Under the Budget Control Act of 2011, if Congress appropriates more money than allowed by budget caps set in that law, across the board cuts are implemented to bring the funding in line with caps. That happened once in 2013, 
and the results were so draconian for defense and non-defense agencies that Congress and the White House have relaxed the caps each year since. However, the law remains in place and the budget caps and sequestration are back in play for 2018 and beyond. The purpose of the hearing was to illuminate the damage that would be done to the military if funding is held to those caps. Few expect that to happen though, and when asked, if they are preparing budget requests that are in line with the BCA limits, each of the military chiefs explicitly or implicitly said no. All right. Uh, let's see here. Lab technician writes. Oh, it's, it's Andy, actually. Uh, Dear Mark, your videos and documentaries are lovely. Well, thank you. I've never really thought of them as lovely. Please answer this simple question. Why were the U.S. and the USSR desperately firing rockets up into the atmosphere? What was the purpose of firing high kiloton, low megaton weapons into the dome to break it with a firmament water not leak in and destroy the world? Okay, I got to answer the, one of these questions. So, yeah, they were trying to break it. Why, why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're men, that's what men do. If they see a wall, if all of a sudden they know they're in a cage, if you, if you woke up and you were what you thought were in jail, What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to test the walls. All all living creatures do this. We all test the barriers to some degree. Now, animals will test the bar barrier until they get bored with it and then just be resigned to their fate. But human beings do not. And I'm sure they tried a lot of other things first, but, you know, regular artillery and high explosives. And then it's like, okay, let's work to atomic weapons. Or, you know, if you don't believe in atomic weapons, then whatever they use. They use the best stuff they got. And uh, I don't think they thought it was actually firmament water and it was going to break and come flooding in or anything. And even if they did, it's the old argument from um, the Trinity uh, site, which was there was a physicist that said during our atomic weapon testing where he had thought that it was possible that the weapon would ignite the 20% oxygen atmosphere that we live in and burn up the entire atmosphere and everyone would die. And the argument against that was, well, if that happens, who's going to yell at you? You know, if everyone everyone dies, then you're, no one's even going to know what happened. That everyone doesn't die. So that's what they probably thought. It's like, look, what we got to lose? Let's see if we what we can do here. But they couldn't break it. Uh, let's see. Did the U.S. and USSR achieve their objective of breaking the firmament? I don't think they did. In fact, I think after the first three shots, because you can you can track it. If you look up high-altitude nuclear explosions, you can see... The, the first three shots were really, really big, megatons. But after that, they lowered it down to kiloton weapons, which I think were just to paint the sky. They were trying to figure out. It was just, you know, just, just hitting hitting the sky in different places, lighting up and saying, okay, that's where the curvature appears to be. And they were basically mapping out the shape of the, the firmament itself. And uh, he goes, what happened after all those rockets were fired? Uh, that was it. That's... You know, they fired for four years. And did those rockets return with clues in the firmament on their tips? No, no, no. They detonated up there. Uh, I, again, if you're listening there, Andy, uh, they they fired weapons up there to light up the sky. No, no different than firing um, a big flare to light up that they used to still do in the military. You fire up a big, big flare to light up the ground below you so you can see what the ground looks like. That's what they, you know, imagine that on a much, 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 a bigger scale and that's what that's what happened there uh anyway did those rockets return with the clues of the firm on their tips regards andy scunthorpe from north links england great britain so thanks andy leonardo writes hello mark i really like your work i would like to contribute to the community with pictures and experiments let me know how i can start to post or upload some pictures many thanks cheers uh as far as uploading pictures, if you're not going to upload your own YouTube videos, I mean, that's what I'd, I'd go after first. I would take as many pictures and convert them to video and then put them on YouTube. That's that's what I would do first. As far as uh, sites you can go to, I think Insanity is Sanity. If you look up his website, I think he's got, I can't remember the name of it, Ralph, and forgive me, I'm, I'm not, not going to look it up as we speak to slow things down. Uh, also, Flat Earth Friends. You can you can go to that site. Uh, others, you know, but but first you really should whatever you've got out there, or send them to me, heck, or send it to anybody in the community. If you don't, if you've got a whole bunch of stuff, if you've got pictures, um, but if you if you're thinking about doing experiments, really turn them into videos, make a channel, put them up there, and make sure you put flat Earth in the title of your video so that it gets tracked by everybody in the community. 
that's what I suggest first. So hopefully, you know, you, um, you listen to this and uh, you'll, you'll get some stuff. And he is also out of England. We get a lot of England people. Uh, let's see here. Anya writes, Hello, Mark. First off, I was elated to hear you worked in the gaming industry. I myself am a trained as a 3D modeler and texture artist. And I learned very fast, all caps, that you cannot believe what you see, ever. Unless you're there yourself, I myself have made photorealistic models and know how easily it can be done. I first heard of you when listening to Rob Skiba's Flat Earth video. Of course, then I had to rush out and watch all your interviews. Ooh, good lord, really? Oh, on Canary Cry Radio. And I am currently gorging myself on anything, any, all caps, thing I can find relating to Flat Earth. I'm convinced, but my husband is not. And it's a pretty good question in my mind. When he was a kid, his dad and he took a relatively cheap telescope into their backyard in Massachusetts and saw the orbiting... ISS. He claims to have been able to see struts and things. Uh huh. I find this ridiculous because with a cheap telescope, his words, there would be nowhere near the magnification to see something that supposedly was orbiting the planet in space, all caps. But he is determined he saw it. Any thoughts? Blessing on you and your family. Anya D. Uh, thank you, Anya. And uh, yeah, for people that that claim they have telescopes and seen the ISS. Yeah, they saw something up there. Absolutely, they probably saw something there. Is a modified U-2 plane that, that flies remotely, you know, that's, that's, that looks like the ISS? Maybe. I, d I don't know. But what I do know is they're faking the interior footage of the ISS. Uh, all the interior footage, all the people that are running around in their khakis and their polo shirts and their socks. Why are there no shoes? Why are there no hatches that they open and close? Why doesn't anybody ever wear a spacesuit? Why isn't anyone ever worried about micrometeors? Why isn't anyone turning a wrench on a regular basis? Where is the machine shop? I, I could go on and on and on and on and on. The ISS, functionally, if you have any doubt, listen to uh, the industrial valve expert that I had on my Strange World show. who I read a statement of his where he said there's no way, no way that the ISS is as advertised. It's There's too many things missing. And these astronauts are way too casual about it. And they're, I mean, not to mention the stupid things. If it costs, what, thousands and thousands of dollars an ounce to send something out there, why, why are they sending up things like guitars and gorilla suits and toys on a regular basis and, and, and sports hats and memorabilia, you know, for advertising purposes? Why? You know how much money you're, you're spending there? It's, it doesn't become cost effective. Uh, but that's, that's just a side note. So if you're the, what I'm getting at is if you're faking the ISS, interior footage, that, and when, when we know full well we have the technology now to do this, then that means you can't go up there. And if you can't go up there, then what the heck is up there? You know, if you can't put people on that up there, then what is it flying up there? And I don't think it's flying at 400 miles. I think it's probably flying much, much lower. So, anyway, that's what I would have him say first. Uh, if he thinks about the ISS, if you want him to watch something, go into my YouTube channel, Mark Sargent. There's a playlist there called um, Testimonial Shows or Testimony Shows. And go down to Industrial Valve Expert and listen to me read this guy uh, talking about what he thinks the ISS is. And he's talking about from an industrial engineer's standpoint where he deals with valves and seals and hatches and things that should be. And you got to ask yourself, if, if this thing is like a submarine, why aren't they ha why don't they have compartments? Why is the thing just one big giant open thing? Do you even see doors when you're watching this? I mean, one little micrometeor, they're all dead. All dead instantly because nobody's near any spacesuits. The spacesuits take forever to get on. Nobody's wearing them, and there's no segments between the two. If a, a micrometeor gets in there, you're it's it's over within seconds. So and so you'd think they'd be a little more tense, a little more edge. Nope, nope, just floating around, taking showers next to electrical panels. You know, it, anyway, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to. Uh, let's see, Lambros writes. Hello, another Flat Earth email. Hello, my name is Lambro, and I've become increasingly interested in all the recent information regarding the lies that we find ourselves being inundated with. I simply wanted to point out another person you might gain some insight from. His name is Jason James Bickford, a.k.a. Dusty Westfield. And why would, why would, anyway. And all of the YouTube videos I can say in the complete 
honesty, I believe you two to be the only people I refer, refer to as sincere in your efforts to expose us all to the simple truth. Please, if you haven't already, watch The McFly Code by Polarization Nation Media. He, he details through decades of media manipulation a very sinister game of revealing staged acts of terror and war through movies, music, and television. According to him, there's a simple, I'm sorry, there's ample evidence of 9-11 being predicted from over 30 years before the event, revealed in movies such as Back to the Future, along with other media. And now he's been arrested, apparently, for claiming the same movies uh, on television shows predict and television shows predict a second major event which will take place on October 4th 2016 less than three weeks away I suppose I pray all of this is just a terribly misunderstood coincidence and that the month of October will come and go with no such disaster but from everything I've seen I'm not sure about anything anymore thank you for your time hope all is well Lembros October 4th, huh? Yeah. I, look, every prediction up until now, I mean, nobody predicted September 11th, so, you know, not on a major scale anyway, and we, you know, 2001, but uh, we haven't, we, we haven't had any good predictions since then, so I, I don't know. I, I've heard this all before, and look, I'm a little jaded because, even though I'm open to a lot of stuff because of Flat Earth, I'm jaded because of the whole Nibiru Planet X thing. I was into Nibiru Planet X, and I could have sworn, you know, it's like, why didn't it happen at the end of 2012? Uh, or, you know, why not 2013, 2014? Look, it's 2016. Nibiru, if it comes now, I don't care. You know, I've told people, it's like, look, if it shows up in the sky now, especially since I'm into Flat Earth, don't believe anything you see. Oh, it may be loud and cause disruption and all this stuff, but it's not going to run into us. I know that much. Uh, let's see. Subject, Flat Earth Video. Brother, I love this video. I have so many questions, I don't even know where to start. I am a so-called black man. Why, why would you be so-called? And just recently starting to believe I am an Israelite, okay? And someone found my way to Flat Earth Videos. Been stuck on them for a while. I guess my question is, well, I guess I don't know what to ask. Just soul-searching for answers. Want to inform others. You said they are hiding God. What do you mean? Um, okay. What I meant is if, this is simple and you know, it's in the clues. If there, if we are in an enclosed structure, if we are in a giant building, then that building was built somebody, built by someone, which means a creator, which means a creator. Plan, you know, there, there's your intelligent design, and for some people, that that creator is going to be God. For other people, it's going to be an advanced civilization. So that's why I meant what I meant when I said they are hiding God. Do you know why we're so racist, or why racism was created? Oh boy, where's this going? Not sure what you know about the Bible and Jacob and Esau, but there is truth to this. Is CERN trying to bust through the dome? Possibly. I just want to know the truth. Um, yeah, CERN could be a, a last-ditch effort, you know, instead of trying to punch through it with force, you, maybe you try to beam through it, maybe, or, you're, you know, just bypass it. Uh, let's see, I was Muslim for the last eight years, and something just wasn't right. Now I'm back into the Bible. Not sure what I'm asking or what I even want you to say. Just thought the video was amazing. You are a blessed soul. Sent from his iPhone. I love how, uh, how all those are included now, you know, in the bottom of emails. They figured out how to way to tack those on at the bottom. I don't know if you have to volunteer for that. So like, sent by my Android, sent by my iPhone. Uh, Jordan writes, hello, sir. What's up, Mark? I've been listening to you for a while now, and you're pretty great. <laughs> Thank you. A few inquiries for you. If there is no gravity on the moon, gravity has never been proven by but I digress wouldn't that make it impossible to just walk everywhere on the moon meaning if there was no gravity wouldn't you fall off if you walked too far there's nothing holding you on the surface um I, I if you're asking that question right I don't think you're quite getting the whole concept of flat earth there's no moon to land on 
And uh, again, the flat earthers aren't saying that there isn't gravity. Something is obviously pulling or pushing things to the ground. What they're saying is, is that how science defines gravity is probably way, way off. Even myself say that gravity, you know, science says that gravity is because of, of density uh, that, you know, from reaching all the way to the core of the earth, you know, 4,000 miles down, if you believe what they're saying. Uh, in a flat world, there's also density, but it's probably more electromagnetic or the density becomes way, way more increased once you get past a certain depth. And you gotta remember, we've only drilled down eight miles or 12 kilometers. Those are the deepest holes we've ever drilled. So let's see, also, when is the next strange world? There are only 70. That was a few weeks ago. I know you're probably busy. And yes, you're absolutely right. He wrote this in the 19th. And uh, just um, two days ago, uh, I did a uh, day after he wrote that. I, I did another Strange World, so episode seventy one, and I will do episode seventy two, and I will try to keep going. I I would have had it there earlier, but I I hit a switch wrong where I said uh, that because I was up in Canada, and I did. I you can set the the show to go to a rerun, but the thing is you have to manually set it back, because otherwise it'll just keep doing reruns every week. And I set it all after the show started, so I didn't flip the switch to like five minutes after the show started, and it was too late. Uh, once that happens, you, that, that show becomes a rerun, and there's nothing you can do to, to get it back unless the station uh, manager overrides it. And he was not available at the time, so I was screwed. Uh, but that's okay, I just did one this last week, and I'll, I'll do one this week. Uh, let's see here, last question, trying to get a good base and followers for a podcast. That's one thing I love to do. And if you came on for an episode, I know I could get my name out there. Anyway, keep it up, uh, Jordan. Yeah, happy to do your podcast. You bet. Let me know, and uh, I'll be on there, and hopefully it'll it'll help you. Let's see, who's this from? Basil. Basil. Hi, Mark. I'm Santos's friend. I recently made a best acting of all time video and put Charlie Chaplin clip at the end of it. It's a scene from The Great Dictator where he is playing around with a globe and it's quite funny. I thought you might like it. It's mixed in with some music. It's at 7 minutes and 47 seconds in if you want to go straight to it. Please feel free to upload it to your channel if you want. There are no copyright issues with it. I checked it uh, in my my videos tab. I am a flat earther. Best of best to you, my friend. I follow your work and enjoy listening to your show and interviews. You have a great voice and a way of speaking. Why? Thank you, uh, Basil. Uh, let's see who is this. This is whew, this is a tough name. It's Dragasa. That's a kind of a cool name. Uh, hello. First of all, don't be harsh on my bad English. English ain't my first. You're doing pretty well so far. I'm new to this idea, but I found that it's very easy to believe in flat Earth. Why? There is so many clues of Earth being flat. Not so much in globe. Uh, I should do, no, I'm not going to do an accent, I swear. I was told that Earth is a globe with no evidence. I have a simple question. If we have so many satellites in the sky, can someone take a picture of any of them? Except that Black Knight Witch... It is isn't ours. Best regards, Dragasa Burbakov, Serbia. Uh, Broadcasting from his Samsung Galaxy. Smart telephona. <laughs> Fun. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, you're right. There's no... Yeah, the, we see d drawings of satellites, which you think with all those satellites up there, and NASA, and JAXA, and the European Space Agency, and so on, and so on. You'd think everyone would be taking pictures of other people's satellites, especially if they got anywhere close to them, because why wouldn't you have cameras on them? In fact, why won't why don't all satellites nowadays have default cameras on these on these things? They should. They're cheap. They're easy. Why, why, how hard could it be? But they don't. So you're, it's, it's a good point. You want to have fun? Those debunkers that are out there, look up pictures of satellites and tell me how many of them aren't drawings, because anyway, it's good. So thank you, Dragasa. Brendan writes, don't forget about Buddha. All right. There are truths in the Bible, yes. I'd like to remind you about spiritual rebirth, the prediction of Buddha, and the prediction of Padmasamabhava. Hopefully I didn't butcher that too badly. I believe we are all part of this prediction. However, I had an experience that came a little closer. 
That's all of my writings in these attachments. Please enjoy. I'd like to hear some comments too, if possible. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I will check it out when I can. And no, I, I the the major, major five religions. I respect all of them, uh, and that would be Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity. I respect all of them. Uh, but as far as uh, betting the farm on any one of them, that's a tall order. I mean, you know, I was raised Christian, and so I'm biased, you know, because Christian is the Western world, especially in the United States. It, with a lot of Christians over here. But there are also a lot of major religions. That, I mean, all like uh, Hinduism has, what, a billion followers? Catholicism has a billion. Uh, they're, they're, the major five religions make up 80% of the population. So I'd like to think that I don't, you got to ask yourself this, regardless of what religion you follow, are you willing to bet that that one is the one that absolutely, positively, 100% represents the builders of this place? Got to ask yourself that. And I'll be talking about that uh, a little bit on a, um, a Christian-based show that I'm going to be doing coming up. It's like, look, I, I was raised Christian. I, I totally... You know, that's that's the one I skew towards. But I'm not going to shut down the the other four. Not a chance. You know, a, a billion people can't be wrong, can they? Well, it, it, it was kind of like an old Simpsons joke. It was, uh, they, they had a, a kind of a parody show on the Simpsons called Smart Line. Smart Line, and you know, tomorrow, which is the one true religion? Which was kind of a joke, because you could debate that literally till everyone's voices just stopped working, and you'd never solve anything, because all the religions have so much faith, but none of them were willing to compromise. Eh, it's tough. Thomas writes, another Flat Earth Clue. Hey Mark, first I want to thank you for pulling my head out of the sand. Flat Earth Clues was the first video I watched. With for what it was worth, I watched with a mindset of debunking, and the rest was history. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Recently, I was thinking about aircraft, specifically the SR-71 and the world record flight from New York to London. Well, it was public New York to London flight. The record states that the plane flew at 1,800 miles an hour and covered 3,461 miles in an hour 54. So to make that math e easier, let's say two hours at that distance means it would have had to descend 66,000 feet a minute to maintain altitude. Hmm, yeah. Not going to happen. Thanks, Thomas. Good point. 66,000 feet a minute? That sounds about right, doesn't it? Is that right? 66,000 feet a minute? That would mean the plane would have to... Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Anthony writes... Star Trails. Please refer to me as Anthony. Well, how can I not? That's what your email says you are. That's Anthony. I'm sure someone has thought of this before, but when I heard about Star Trails, I wanted to measure the angle they made over a period of time. Since the stars disappear when the sun comes up, people may not have noticed if the stars are rotating faster or slower than they should in a 24-hour period. I found a good video that claimed to have filmed the Star Trails water for almost eight hours eight hours would be 120 degrees out of a 360 for a 24-hour period to my disappointment i measured the star trail to be exactly 120 degrees this appears to be strong evidence for a rotating globe it still hasn't convinced me that the earth is a globe thoughts also thanks for putting simply red in your videos oh right sunrise is one of my favorite songs now because of that oh yeah simply read the band uh, yeah, with the song Sunrise, they did a remake of I Can't Go For That by Hall & Oates. Really, really loved it. Um, and uh, reminds me of uh, a person that introduced me to the song back in Colorado. Great song. Love it. The, um, well, when it comes to the star trails, look, everything that's in the sky, you've got to understand, is just part of the planetarium. So the sky is, we are in... An illusion a mechanical illusion mind you not not necessarily I mean, it could be digital but still it's got mechanics to it that is trying to create the illusion of a globe spinning that's how it works and the powers that be the authority you know the government the royals the super rich they're the ones that are keeping this thing going 
I think we should have discovered it, you know, by finding the edge back in the, I don't know, the 60s, 70s. Somebody privately should have found it. But the government found it instead, so they locked everything down. They said, okay, we're going to keep this going as long as we can. So when it comes to the sky, you know, I know that the star trails also, you know, hint that there's a globe. So does the curvature of the shadow on the moon. So does a blood moon. How does a blood moon happen if it's a flat, if it's truly a flat earth? Because there's no earth between the sun and the moon. So how does a blood moon happen? Well, you're thinking, well, it can't. Well, it can if the moon is its own display system, which means it's just part of the planetarium. You guys would understand if all of a sudden I decided to put my uh, YouTube logo on the moon. Once that happens, then you're going, oh, I get it. You can do anything on the moon. Yeah, you can put your own face on the moon. You can spell out things in stars. You can do all sorts of fun stuff. So as far as the stars tracking through the sky, the star trails, it's it's going to simulate a globe. That's the whole point. It has to simulate the globe. Anyway, Jasmine writes voicemail from jasmine how about that firmament all caps and a bunch of question marks and exclamations oh good lord all right this is going to be one of the only emails because there's so many capitals and que and exclamation parts and question marks that i don't say all caps i'll just try to say it louder hi there mark smiles i left you a voicemail earlier on monday to thank you for your well delivered YouTube video about the firmament or hiding God. Really, a superlative effort. These are uh, so many caps. I was simply reaching out to connect with another journalist researcher who digs subjects of this nature. Recently moved to the area, Denver. Ugh, I'm sorry, I'm not in Denver anymore. I'm in Seattle and in Canada as well. Uh, so I think we might be neighbors. We used to be neighbors. We aren't anymore. Good to be in circles of like-minded friends, as my grandma and grandpa used to say. Just wanted to reach out to say your research and com commentary is one of the best I've come across on the subject of a flat earth. I'm also glad that you were open to the suggestions of your comments to acknowledge the he to his handiwork does great courage even if one doesn't believe in him oh, good lord she's enthusiastic i have a blog on wordpress and we recently tackled this subject here's my article short and to the skinny so i'd love your input one of these days i do please if anyone's writing me don't you don't have to put in all caps all the time you can put things in quotes or italics not you don't have to use that many caps uh need an editor so most of this is all me but i'm thinking most will get the message and she did a wordpress thing called Werner von braun and nasa lies the truth is in the firmament just want to say again how very well you presented facts and observations wish wish you nazi oops but not really youtube oh youtube is you nazi i get it made a recommend for your channel when i was researching prior to posting my article might have slam dunked them when it was initially published hope this message finds you and yours well and may god continue why would you capitalize continue to bless you with his discernment you're tuned in more than i think you know see i would have capitalized maybe more but not the i think Signed, J. Steele, a.k.a. Jazz, via WordPress, uh, or Jamming Always. Why, oh why, just another WordPress blog. Wink face. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Ed writes, that's easy. Ed, Ed doesn't even have any caps in this email. Hiding God. Hi, Mark. What you say makes sense. But why do you think they would hide God from us in this way? I'm not a professional intellectual, or am not a practicing Christian, but surely if they know of God's existence, are they not plain with fire, so to speak? I always believed in God as a child and often prayed to him when I felt sad or weak, and I did get a warm feeling of love and strength in return. As I got older and lost faith in the people around me, I drifted away from God. My life went downhill 
in a big way. I don't know if you're still communicating on this email anymore, so I guess I'll leave it there for now. God bless Ed. And yeah, Ed, the reason why they are hiding God is because science has no room for God. Plain and simple. Science does not want any part of it because God has a lot of unexplained things and mysterious things and science doesn't like mysteries. They don't like question marks. That is why, even though they've only drilled down 8 miles or 12 kilometers, that's why they don't, uh, you know, they don't put a big question mark in the middle of the globe. They, they will tell you exactly what all the layers are, for, starting from red to orange to yellow to white, uh, just, even though they have no idea. And they'll say this in Wikipedia. They say, oh yeah, they're extrapolating from volcanoes and, and stuff on the surface. It's like, really? Because it's 4,000 miles to the center of the Earth, if you believe in a globe Earth. And you've only drilled down a, a tenth of a percent. Not even, not, not 10%, a tenth of 1%. Not even. So what are you saying that's down there? You don't know what's down there. Uh, that's just one part of it. Science does that with anything, which is why I use the Indiana Jones argument. Everyone knows Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the end of that first movie, the Ark of the Covenant. What does the United States government do when they finally get the Ark of the Covenant? They put it in a crate, they put it in a warehouse, and no one gets to see it because th that sort of thing goes against science. It's a mystery. It's got magical powers. And their science doesn't like that. They they like stuff they, they can explain. If they can't explain it, they will bury it. And that's why they're they're trying to hide this. If the firmament is real, that means God is real, or at least someone that is closer to God than we are. Which means you if you're the power, if you're the super rich, the royals, the the governments of the world, that means you're not the ultimate power. You can only be the po power perceived as power achieved. If there's someone bigger than you standing above you, then how much respect do you get? People will bypass that and say, you know what? I'm going to wait for the creators to come back. I'm not going to listen to you anymore. Science will, isn't nearly as credible if this thing becomes real. If Flat Earth is real, science is, uh, is, takes a huge gut punch and they don't come back for a while. They're, you know, because if they're wrong about this, then their credibility on a lot of other things is wrong. You know what, what you've been what you've been saying about the Big Bang? What about evolution? What about carbon dating? Take your pick. Not to mention all the corporate science blunders, and I won't even get into that right now. I'm gonna save that for them. Uh, debate a friend. That's the subject of the email. Hey Mark, love all your videos. I have a comment first. Why do rivers stop flowing when they hit the ocean? Because the Earth is flat, and so are the oceans. So the water hits its lowest point of the ocean. Hmm. If we are on a ball, water would never stop moving shifting everywhere on the earth. My friend, no matter what, I say disagrees with everything Flat Earth 9-11, etc. He's very smart and has an answer for everything. Is it possible for him to debate you sometime? Let me know. He drives me crazy because I believe in the Flat Earth and the government doing 9-11. Thanks, I appreciate the time. Tommy from New Jersey. Uh, yeah, if he's got a problem with 9-11, Flat Earth, he's never ever gonna get. And I wrote Tommy back here and I said, look, if you want your friend to think about 9-11, all you have to do is bring up one thing, and that's called Building 7. Uh, anyone that knows anything about 9-11, well, any good researchers anyway, should know that Building 7 was a building, a 50-story building, I know it's 48, 50-story building that wasn't hit by a plane and wasn't destroyed by debris. In fact, a fire just broke out on its basement, and then all of a sudden, hours and hours later, after Manhattan was pretty much evacuated, it dropped at free fall speed. It's, let me let me clarify here. That building dropped on its own, but a plane never hit it. And why? And it dropped at free fall speed. It didn't like just crumble away, and nobody wants to talk about this. Buildings, if they burn, they crumble. They don't drop at free fall speed. If they, if if you could burn a building and have it drop at free fall speed, demolition teams would be out of business because all they do is they'd set a fire in the basement, let it burn for five hours, and oh, the building's gone. No, no, you have to core out the building and set up explosive charges for weeks ahead of time. It it takes precise engineering, precise placement of explosives to bring down a building at free fall speed, and nobody wants to talk about it. Uh, and, and we know it's a touchy subject because uh, Rosie O'Donnell, who used to be on The View, she brought up Building 7, and it sh it, the second she brought it up on the air, she was fired. And they kept her off of The View for years. And now she's back, and I'm sure she's not going to make that same mistake again. Uh, the other thing about Building 7, if you want to look it up, and that is the British television team that reported it falling 
collapsing 20 minutes before it collapsed. And that was done, and, and you know if, if, you're, if you're putting the pieces together, that was done because they got the script ahead of time. They got the press release that said Building 7 has, fa- has fallen. But because they were flying from England and went over to New York, they got their time zone screwed up. So instead of te- reading that story 40 minutes after it fell, they read it 20 minutes before it did. And they, it's, it's totally screwed up. And you can see this in the background. She can, the, the woman that's reporting it, you could see the building still burning behind her shoulder. So how did she report that it collapsed 20 minutes before it collapsed? Because it was a controlled demolition. And why was it a controlled demolition? If that was controlled demolition, so were the other two. Buildings do not fall at free fall speed from fires. They don't do it. If they did, demolition teams would be useless. All you would do is set fires. And what are you burning? And what are you burning it with? Uh, to, to burn, what, what's, what's generating that much heat? And even if it burned that much heat, yeah, the building would lean, the part would crumble, but the whole thing would just wouldn't just collapse. It'd be... It'd, uh. Anyway, so that's that's what I'd go after him first. If you can get him on 9-11, maybe you can work slowly into Flat Earth. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Ten minutes left, maybe. Uh, this one is from Sean. Sean says, loved you guys' Sunday interview. Also, name has been dragged through the mud on Facebook. Sorry, guys. I really got to vent. I've been attacked so hard this past weekend for believing in Flat Earth. But before that story, I just want to say it was great to hear you two talk again. He's talking about Jaron and I when Jaron and I were on Globebusters together. Fantastic show. It honestly helped me get through today. See, I may have said things on people's Facebook, had a couple of few weeks ago about the gravity waves being fake. You remember, well, unfortunately, those are the people I know in real life, friends on Facebook because of my DJ career. I had. So you get the idea here. NASA fanboy, new age, gotta know the universe, man. You woke, you woke, bruh? Anyway, that night I happened to comment on the gravity video with fake. Well, it was a shitstorm that night that didn't make me look good, but we all have bad nights where we just can't take the blatant programming. Yeah, well, weeks had passed and obviously struck some chords because that kid I commented on decided to make a comment on my wall saying, NASA is broadcasting from space live on YouTube right now. So, of course, I'm like, cool, dude, bet it cuts out like every 20 20 minutes, and then explained how high-altitude cameras with fisheye lenses can be recorded and put on a green screen in a dark pool and how they made the movie Gravity. This is when his friend's opinion Richard Hoagland asked there's so much slang people come in blah 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 we know how this goes what about this what about this pictures videos articles paragraphs uh in your head STFU and look so 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 many insults and then this real douche arrived he says a very nasty comment multiple insults and then decides to make this whole post making fun of me he goes, I thought this whole flat earth thing was a satire joke, but I just saw someone defending it, ha ha ha, and then screenshots from his friends of my conversation show up. Many terrible, terrible comments issued. So much that my girlfriend and her sister couldn't believe how nasty and even cried at one point today, me finding out after the fact. So obviously I defend myself. My names have been dragged, my name's been dragged through the mud for the past two days on this. Many things misunderstood, and if you want to know my opinion, you can message me. Basically, they wanted me to have a second conversation uh, uh, against 40 other people, again. Uh, So I say a few things and eventually said, just message me. Again, no messages. Then it turned at least uh, on one comment. Hey, I want to actually know, know it, no disrespect. Sent her... ODD's five minutes, and then sh- then the clues mash up, the Flat Earth clues mash up. And on my first drag in the mud conversation on my page, I was still dealing with, I got people, best friends in the past, saying, hey, I don't believe you, I respect you, such and such. He also get, got the five minute ODD vid. So in the 40 to 60 people I dealt with today and yesterday in the public level with people who know in real life and many hurtful insults, I stuck through that explained what I could even if it was misunderstood didn't insult anyone even made comments claiming I'm not insulting anyone here you know that one and even planted two definite seeds and possibly ten shadow seeds shadow seeds nice it's becoming a thing my friends we aren't going anywhere and god damn it the not eight inches per square mile thing why 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 can't they get that so freaking simple 
Anyway, thanks for the rant. I hope it helped some of you dealing with the same horridness of mouth breathers out there. Peace to you all. Love and bless. <laughs> Stay flat. Grady Gromp. Sean. Thanks, Sean. Uh, I, I put turn on spell checker last next time, and and it'll be easier to read. Uh, but thank you. Uh, Ryan writes. Uh, have you ever thought that if we can't go up and we can't go down, why not push forward? I'm not sure how to word it in the way my brain sees it, that of which is going to the start of Antarctica and tunneling straight through instead of climbing and then continuing on. Obviously, at a certain point, go down somewhat because if above is cold and below is hot, there must be a middle ground at which wouldn't, would be easiest for to work and survivability. If we go as far as to hit the wall, then go down. And if we go so far... To hit magma, make a separate tunnel, going back. Where is he going here? All right. Anyway, I'll just go to his last paragraph. On another note, thank you for your clues videos. When I heard of this theory month ago, uh, months ago, the videos I watched were more of telling you that it's this or that, but not doing much much explanation on the different matters. I think the first one I watched, the first five ten minutes, was some guy having pictures on the video and yelling, "Where's the curve?" Oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, yes, it was a little eye-opening, but I think your videos are more helpful. You take the time to break things down. I'm going to try and convince my cousin to watch your videos, but I haven't been successful before. He's been into all of these for a few years now, but he laughs when I bring this one up. Ever since he started with all these theories and such, he became an atheist almost overnight, and when I found out, it was one of the most shocking things. Me, on the other hand, I've been one since I was a child, and these videos are really making me think. I'm going to try to use that as leverage for him to watch them. Anyway, thanks for the hard work. Uh, I'm going to do a couple more. Uh, Robert writes, great show and info, great work, keep it up. Thank you for your good work uh, that you do, and may each day be your best day ever. Thanks, Bob. Vicky writes, I want to thank you for posting your videos. I know you spent many, many hours researching. I have a short question. I understand about pilots switching out flights due to fatigue. My question is, what about private pilots who have their own planes? How do they not know what's going on, especially in the Southern Hemisphere? Surely someone would have figured out that it's not adding up. Land masses, not where they've been told where they are. Miles distance between destination des destinations. Obviously, I don't fly, or maybe I could figure this out a little better. Also, what is happening to the wire at the edges? Okay, uh, first thing, pilots. Uh, just watch, go to my Flat Earth Testimony shows on my YouTube channel, Mark K. Sargent, and you will see, I think I've got three or four different pilots there. Listen to those interviews. That'll give you a better idea what the pilots are seeing. Uh, also, what is happening to the wire at the edges? What about the wire at the edges? It's not falling off because Antarctica is a weird continent that slopes up 150 to 200 feet straight up along the entire coastline and then goes up to two miles. So it's over like 12,000 feet almost immediately and plateaus off and then it's two miles so that water's not going anywhere and uh, um, I understand it's very cold and there's a lot of ice but it can't all be ice can it uh, so far that's all they're showing us is ice what's keeping the water in the high the ice yes the the high sloping ice what happens when the ice melts when is it melting I know these are trivial questions but I'm having trouble visualizing my mind's eye thank you again God bless you Vicky um, let's see. Can I get one more in? Yeah, let's do one more. We'll call it simplicity. We'll end it. We'll end it on this. Hello, Mark. I was just listening to you and Jaron. And I agree at the two hour and two minute mark that it is easy to understand once your shell has been broken and you're right. You encourage people to research. What I kick myself over is why it did it take so long for this awakening to happen. I was rummaging through the internet, delving deeper inside the rabbit hole from royal bloodlines to 911 to new age BS. But then I stumbled across Matt Boylan's video and boom, I'm sold. My family was easy as well. Uh, all it took was looking with new eyes and they just, uh, they just got it. My nine-year-old lived with his mom when he came here and we started talking to him and he says, well, that makes sense because if the stars were constantly moving, then the night sky should look a lot like hot sand on a glass table in the dark. He said the stars should be buzzing all night. So I agree. Once you awake, you are wanting people to challenge you so they can wake up as well. Thanks, man. You guys are helping the world to realize we are special and created by a loving God. And that's from Kit. 
So thank you, Kit, very much. And thank you, everyone. We'll just end on that one. It was pretty positive. And we'll talk to you next time.